Now on BBC2, sit back as we take a journey through the digestive system. Hi, my name is Professor Pennell. What follows is a short documentary describing the organs and processes that turn this into this and allows us to do this and this. The main organs involved in digestion, the liver, stomach, pancreas and the large and small intestine are all connected to the elementary canal, which is the one-way system of a length of about 8 to 10 meters that begins at the mouth and ends at the anus. Muscles found in the wall of the esophagus and the intestines rhythmically move to help push nutrient material through the canal, whilst muscles in the stomach contract roughly every 20 seconds to help churn up the material liquids held within. We will begin our journey at the mouth. Food enters the mouth and aided by mucus and rhythmic muscles, it travels down the esophagus and into the stomach. The cardiac sphincter closes the entrance to the stomach to prevent digestive juices from escaping up the esophagus. The nutrient material in the stomach begins to be broken down by an acidic liquid secreted by glands in the wall of the stomach called gastric pits. The gastric pits produce mucus from the neck cells, pepsinogen from the chief cells and hydrochloric acid from the oxyntic cells, which together form the gastric juices. Once the gastric juices have been secreted, the hydrochloric acid converts pepsinogen into an enzyme called pepsin, a change in the active center. Pepsin breaks protein change within the nutrient matter, making for easier digestion. The extreme acid environment and the powerful work of enzymes break down the nutrient matter into a partly digested fluid called chyme. At this point, the pyloric sphincter opens and the chyme flows into the small intestine for further digestion and absorption. The small intestine is about 2.7 meters long and it is where most of the important chemical digestion and absorption occurs. The duodenum which is found in about the first 20 centimetres of the small intestine and the part of the system that receives digested juices from the liver and the pancreas. This helps to neutralise the acidic chyme allowing for enzymes to be secreted by the duodenum. By this point the nutrient matter has now been broken down into much smaller and easier to absorb fragments and the material is passed on to the second section of the small intestine called the ileum. To increase surface area for absorption the wall of the ileum is covered with tiny finger-like protrusions called villi. On the villi are folded membranes called microvilli which increases the surface contact by around 600 times. This increases the level of absorption. Found between the villi are glands called grips of libicum that produce and secrete intestinal juices made up of mucus and enzymes. A blood capillary network transports nutrients to the liver whilst also supplying blood for the function of the system. A circular muscle and a longitudinal muscle provide the mechanics that enable peristalsis. Nutrient matter and vitamins are absorbed by the small intestine whilst leaving behind matter that either cannot be digested or is unwanted. This matter is squeezed towards the end of the small intestine where it meets the large intestine, also known as the colon. The colon is made up of three distinct sections, the ascending colon, the transverse colon and the descending colon. It is about 1.2 meters in length and about 6 centimeters in diameter. Its function is to absorb water from the undigested matter through a process called osmosis. This helps the body retain bodily fluids that are important in maintaining life. The undigested waste matter, void of most of its liquid, is squeezed into a lump called feces. The colon then pushes the feces towards the end of the elementary canal and into a place called the rectum where it waits for removal in a process maturely called defecation. Now that we know how the digestive system flows, we can focus on the enzymes involved in the breakdown of the nutrients. 
carbohydrates begin to be digested in the mouth, but most of the work is done in the small intestine. Pancreatic juice fed from the pancreas into the small intestine contains the enzyme amylase that breaks down polysaccharides into glucose and disaccharides. Disaccharide enzymes found in the alignin of the small intestine break down disaccharides into monosaccharides which are actively transported into the blood capillary network and are transported to the liver. Proteins which began its breakdown by pepsin in the stomach are further broken down by a converted tripsinogen enzyme called tripsin. Along with trimotripsin, tripsin breaks down proteins into dipeptides and tripeptides. Carboxypeptidase and aminopeptidase are the final enzymes that act on the proteins before the nutrient material is actively transported into the blood capillary network on a journey to the liver. Unfortunately, we've run out of time for this episode, but you can catch part two next week to learn more about the processes of the digestive system.